Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to Creative Grandma's channel. Today's crochet tutorial is for the super easy ombre ripple afghan. This afghan was made using Red Heart Super Saver Ombre yarn in the color Jazzy. So let me tell you everything you're going to need to make this afghan. So here is an up close look at the stitch pattern for this afghan and I have to say this is one of the easiest ripple stitch patterns that you ever want to make. You can make this afghan in just a few days. That's how quick and easy the stitch pattern is. Now if you want to make your afghan larger or wider then you would use the stitch multiple of 10 plus 2. So you would just chain 10, chain 10 again, keep chaining in multiples of 10, and when you get it to the width you want, then you add two more chains. Now remember, when you're doing a ripple stitch, you're going to lose a few inches, because when you start doing the ripple, it will pull it together a little bit, so you may want to add an extra multiple or two when you're doing the afghan. So again, this measures 42 by 58 inches, so use that multiple if you want to change the size. So let me go ahead and show you the yarn I used today. I used the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre, and you can see all those colors in the skein of yarn just come out beautifully the way they blend together in the afghan. So let's go over the information about the yarn I used. It comes in a big 10 ounce skein. It's 283 grams, 482 yards, 440 meters. Now this is 100% acrylic. It is machine wash and dryable and it is made in the USA of imported fibers. It is a number four medium weight yarn. Now they suggest a size I9, but I bumped my hook size up to a 10J and used a 10J for a little bit quicker result. So this is the color Jazzy and I used four skeins. This is color number 3966 Jazzy. And again, you're going to need four skeins of yarn to make this afghan. And if you want to make it larger, then you're going to need more yarn. You're also going to need a size 10J or six millimeter crochet hook. Now I want to show you some of the other colors available in the Red Heart Ombre because I think they have a color for just about everybody. So again, this was the Jazzy. This is those pink shades. And these skeins of yarn I found at Joanne Fabrics and I found them at Walmart. And Walmart had them for a few dollars a skein cheaper. So if you can find them at Walmart, it's a better deal. Now this one I have no clue how to pronounce. It's beautiful shades of purplish plum color. You can see those light, medium, and dark colors. And it's A-N-E-M-O-N-E -E, and it's color number 3965. So you have to imagine all these beautiful colors, how they work up in this way. Now the color I was going to make the afghan in was this beautiful scuba blue. And here's a picture of a shawl made in that color. And I just loved how that color looked. But I'd done so many blue afghans, I thought, well, I'm going to go with something really striking. So that's why I chose that pink jazzy. But they have beautiful colors. And again, this is the scuba, and that is color number 3961. Look at those beautiful blues. And I like that they show what that's going to look like when it's worked up. So that is the colorway, how it would work up in the stitch pattern. So that's the scuba. And if you like greens, here was green apple. And I was standing there for the longest of time because I just could not choose the color. First, I was thinking about getting the green apple, which is color number 4933, and making it a Christmas afghan just with those beautiful shades of green. I thought it would look really pretty for the holidays at Christmas time, but that's the green color, and that is the green apple color 4933. And all the information about the yardage is all the same as that first skein. Now this color is Spearmint. It's color number 3970, but you can see all those beautiful colors in this yarn. 
And again, that was color Spearmint number 3970. And I have two more colors to show you. The next color is the Sea Coral. And I thought this was beautiful as well with those peach tones. And this is color number 3967 Sea Coral. So if you like peach colors, that's another choice. And I have one last color to show you. This last color I was able to find is called Violet. This is color number 3969, and this is true purple. This is like a light lavender, medium and dark purple. So this one is more like a plum rose, and this one is more of the true purples. And again, that was the violet number 3969. Now, I'm not sure exactly how many different colorways Red Heart has in this ombre yarn. Now, these are the colorways that I was able to find in my area. So you may find other colorways in your area, but wonderful selection of colors to suit just about any home decor. So again, you're going to need four skeins of the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in that 10 ounce skein. So four skeins of whatever color you wish to use and then a size 10J or six millimeter hook. So let's go ahead and let's get this project started. So I have my Jazzy, that pink ombre, attached to my hook, and now we're going to begin. We're going to begin and we're going to chain 152 chains. And again, if you wanna change the size of the afghan, you're going to use the multiple of 10, plus two and if you make the afghan larger then you're going to need more yarn so let's go ahead and begin and chain 152 i already have my yarn attached to my hook and i just used a double knot you can use whichever way you prefer to start your chain you're going to yarn over the hook pull it through the loop on the hook and that creates your first chain the loop on your hook does not count as a chain so that's one two three four, five, six. Continue until you have 152 chains and I'll be back and we'll start row one. I have my chain made with 152 chains and now we're ready to begin row one. To begin row one, we're going to skip the first two chain, one, two, and we're going to work a double crochet in each of the next four chains. You're going to yarn over, Skip the first two chain, one, two, insert into the third chain from hook and work a double crochet. Yarn over, pull through that chain, you have three loops. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. That's how you make a double crochet. This chain two space that you skipped will count as your first double crochet. So if you're new to crocheting, go ahead and put your stitch marker right into the top of that second chain. Just go one, two, and this is the top of that first double crochet. And that's very important when you're coming back on row two and ending the row, you'll know where that last stitch is. So now we need to double crochet, one double crochet in each of the next three chain double crochet into the next chain. That's one. Double crochet into the next chain. That's two. And double crochet into the next chain. And that's three. So now we're ready to start our repeat. You're going to skip the next two chain, double crochet into the next chain. 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 You're going to chain two, one, two, and now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next four chain. Double crochet right into the very next chain. Double crochet into the next chain. 
double crochet into the next chain and double crochet into the next chain and that is the end of the repeat so when you look at the repeat itself you're skipping two chain to make your bottom point you're going to work one double crochet in each of the next four chains then you chain two for your top point and then you work one double crochet in each of the next four chain so that's all there is to the repeat so let's do it again and if you need help just click back on the video to where I say this is the start of the repeat and work until I say this is the end of the repeat and we're going to work across two within the last six chains so let's go ahead and do it again we're going to skip the next two chain double crochet one double crochet in each of the next four chains so there's one double crochet into the next chain that's two double crochet into the next chain that's three double crochet into the next chain and that's four now you're going to chain two for your point one two and now we're going to work one double crochet in the next four chains double crochet into the next chain that's one double crochet into the next chain that's two double crochet into the next chain that's three and double crochet into the next chain and that's four and that is the end of the repeat so let's go ahead and do it one more time and then you can continue on your own again this is the start of the repeat you're going to skip the next two chain work one double crochet in each of the next four chains that's one double crochet into the next chain that's two double crochet into the next chain that's three double crochet into the next chain and that's four now we're going to chain two for our top point and we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next four chain double crochet into the next chain that's one double crochet into the next chain that's two double crochet into the next chain that's three and double crochet into the next chain and that's four and that is the end of the repeat so you can see again as you're doing that repeat you can see how it forms each section of that pattern so go ahead and continue again if you need help just click back on the video you're going to skip two chain work one double crochet in each of the next four chains chain two and then double crochet in each of the next four chain repeat that across until you get to the last six chains I'll meet you there and show you how to finish row one I'm over at the end of row one you should have a total of six chains after you do your final full repeat so one two three four five and six chains remaining so to end the row you're going to skip the next two chain one two you're going to work one double crochet into the next chain double crochet into the next chain double crochet into the next chain and then in the very last chain you want to make two double crochet yarn over insert into the last chain work 
two double crochet. One, and double crochet back into that same space, and two. So again, when you end the row, you'll have six chains. You skip two chain, work one double crochet in each of the next three chains, and end with two double crochet into that very last chain. So the one important thing you have to remember when doing this stitch pattern is you're ending with two stitches and you're always starting with two stitches. So the beginning of the row you'll have two double crochet in the first stitch and at the end of the row you'll have two double crochet into the last stitch. So for all my new crocheters go ahead and put your stitch marker right into the top of that very last stitch. So now we're going to go ahead and start row two, which row two will be our repeat row. So you're going to chain two, one, two, and this beginning chain two will count as the first double crochet of the next row. So go ahead and turn your work. We're going to work one double crochet into that very first stitch. So just count down to the bottom of the chain two, one, two, yarn over and insert your hook right at the base of that chain two into the very first stitch. And I always work my stitches under the top two loops. Work a double crochet. So again, when you start row two, you're going to have the chain two as the first stitch and then a double crochet right into that very same beginning stitch. So two double crochets start the row. So go ahead and move that stitch marker up right into the top of that beginning chain two. And now we're going to continue. We're going to work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches double crochet into the next stitch. That's one. Double crochet into the next stitch and if you're having trouble seeing your stitches, turn your work towards you and look for the top of that stitch. Insert under the top two loops. Work your double crochet. That's two. Double crochet into the next stitch. And that is three. So now we're going to go ahead and start our repeat. So if you need help, you'll just click back on the video to where I say this is the start of the repeat and work until I say this is the end of the repeat. And you're going to work that across to within the last six stitches. So let's go ahead and begin. You're going to skip the next two stitches and work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Yarn over, skip the next two stitches, insert into the next and work a double crochet. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. And again, make sure you're going under those top two loops, work a double crochet. So now we're at the chain two point, so we're going to work one double crochet, a chain two, and a double crochet right into this chain two space. So yarn over, insert your hook underneath, and work your stitches around the chain two space. Work a double crochet, chain two, and then double crochet back into that same space. And this makes your point. Now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. And double crochet into the next stitch. And that is the end of the repeat. So when you look at your repeat, you're going to notice you skipped two stitches. You worked one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Then you worked a double crochet, chain two, double crochet into your chain two point, and then one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So let's go ahead and do the repeat a couple more times. You're going to skip the next two stitches double crochet in each of the next three stitches. That's one. Double crochet into the next stitch. 
double crochet into the next stitch and that's three now you're at your chain two point we're going to work a double crochet into the chain two point chain two and then double crochet back into that same chain two point now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches double crochet into the next stitch that's one double crochet into the next stitch that's two and double crochet into the next stitch and that's three and that is the end of your repeat so again when you look at each section you're going to have the four double crochet chain to four double crochet so let's do the repeat one more time and then you can continue on your own you're going to skip the next two stitches work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches one double crochet into the next stitch that's two double crochet into the next stitch and that's three now you're at your chain two point we're going to work a double crochet into the chain two point now we're going to chain two for the point one two and you're going to double crochet right back into that same chain two space now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches double crochet into the next stitch that's one double crochet into the next stitch that's two double crochet into the next stitch and that's three and that is the end of the repeat so my suggestion is when you're starting this pattern for the first time after you get done with each repeat just glance make sure you have four double crochet a chain two and four double crochet and then you know your repeat is correct so go ahead and continue you're going to skip the next two stitches work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches then you're going to work a double crochet chain two double crochet into that chain two space and then work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches repeat that across to the last six stitches and i'll meet you at the end of row two and show you how to finish the row i'm over at the end of row two i just worked my last full repeat and after you work your last full repeat you should have a total of six stitches remaining one two three four five and your sixth stitch is your ending turning chain two and all my new crocheters out there you should have a stitch marker right into the top of that turning chain two to know where your last stitch is so let's go ahead and finish row two we're going to skip the next two stitches and work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches yarn over the hook skip the next two stitches insert into the next stitch work a double crochet double crochet into the next stitch double crochet into the next stitch so in the very last stitch which is the top of that turning chain to work two double crochet right into the top of that chain yarn over insert into the top of the turning chain work two double crochet one and two so row two is finished this is what your work should look like now row one was our base row and row two is the repeat row so when you look at your work you can see how it forms sections here's a section here's a section and then so forth down your work 
So to finish the afghan, you're just going to repeat row two until you have a total of 80 complete rows. So if you need help, just click back on the video and repeat row two until you have a total of 80 complete rows and I'll meet you at the end of row 80. I'm over at the end of row 80, so now I'm just going to fasten off my work, and I like to leave a little bit longer length so I can weave in those ends. And when I fasten off, I just chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab the yarn, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. Now you can use whichever method you prefer to fasten off your yarn. So now you can either leave your afghan with this scalloped edge or you can add the fringe on like I did just to jazz it up a little bit. So what you want to do is make sure your afghan is right side facing. So at the end of row 80 I'm just going to flip this over and then I'm going to turn it so the end of the afghan is facing me. Now when making a ripple afghan, it's not necessary to put the fringe on, but I just did it to add a little special touch to it and put some fringe in these chain two spaces at the point. So again, it's up to you whether to leave it plain or to put the fringe on. So to do the fringe, you want to cut 360 pieces of fringe 13 inches long. So then we're just going to grab 12 pieces of fringe and I need one more for 12. Get this fringe out of the way. And just try to make sure that your ends are even and you can trim these after you make your fringe. So you're just going to fold your fringe in half and keep your finger right into the center of that fringe. And I use my finger and put it through like this. So what you want to do is you want to come over to your first chain two loop. So you want to come over to the chain two space that's facing towards you that dips. So here it is. And I grabbed a much larger crochet hook. I'm just going to insert my crochet hook in through that chain two space. Get your hook and loop it right through the center of that fold where you have your fringe. And then you're just going to pull it through that chain two space and then you're going to pull up, make a bigger loop, and then take your hook underneath those strands of yarn and then pull it right through the loop on your hook. And then you just want to make sure that your yarn is even and just pull that tight and that creates your fringe. So that's all you have to do to do your fringe. So let me show you one more time. Again, you're going to take 12 pieces of fringe and then you're going to fold it in half. Keep your finger right in the center of that fringe. And I always use my index finger kind of like this, put it right through the center. So just make sure you keep it taut, make sure you put your finger through it and then you're putting pressure and just holding it tight, make that loop. Bring your crochet hook down to your next chain two point, insert into that chain two point, and then insert your hook right into the center of that loop at the top of the fold, and then pull it right through the chain two space, and then you want to pull up a loop. You want to pull it up high enough that you can pull the rest of the yarn through. So there you have a loop. Take your hook underneath and around the rest of that yarn on the fringe and then you're just going to pull it through the loop and then you're just going to pull and tighten that fringe and you just you can work with it you can just pull it where it needs tightened up and then just push forward and that is how you put your fringe on your afghan and then again when you're done you can just trim off some of these uneven ends and make it look nice now I did not put fringe on the end of the afghan on either side I only put it in the chain two points so that's up to you if you want to add it to the ends the very ends here that would be up to you so i'm going to go ahead and put the rest of my fringe on my afghan and then i'll be back and show you the finished afghan 
Our afghan is finished. I hope you enjoyed today's crochet tutorial. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the crochet fun here at Creative Grandma's channel. So until next time, happy crocheting everyone!